Hey, what's up? What's up? How you doing? Welcome to my channel, BlackSwanRadio.com. I'm your host, Rondell Jordan. I'm also the author of Illuminated Nubians. IlluminatedNubians.com. This is where you can um, preview and purchase one of my eye-opening books. Illuminated Nubians, what that basically means is, is that I'm highlighting the Nubian perspective that has been hidden in the scriptures, the Bible. And this is a scholarship, this is a study that is non-religious, but respectful to religion. Right? I believe that by adding definition, knowing the geography, knowing the origins of the names, atom, right? Atom was the it was in the Kemet culture, in the Kushite culture, the Nubian culture was the god of creation. You should know this. And the notes that was taken from Greece and added into it. And there is so many different poetic nuances that are in Genesis through Revelations. And these are the reason why they are interconnected. You know, in Revelations, it talked about the pure river of water of life that was clear as crystal proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb. And in it, in the middle of the streets, where on either side of the river was the tree of life. You should know that that is the papyrus. Right? Papyrus only grows up and down the Nile River, which is the root and then the offspring, leading to the offspring of David. Right? And there's a lot that Christ is trying to teach us and show us. But if we can't recognize the black and the white and the union and the wars and the reality of world history because of our racial bias either on either side then this makes us one sided right and in order to have a balanced frame of reference right you have to be able to handle the, the pros and the cons the good and evils of nature because yes nature is beautiful <laughs> it is Abundant, it is astonishing, and it's an experience that we can only get to know in the flesh because it is the physical realm, it is our bodies is made up of its essence, and so this life is a gift from God, and we can allow the default system. To rob us of lifetime, the gift that God has given us, the gift of life. To be led by nonsense is blind faith. At least we all fall of fate in the eternal void of emptiness. So we need to make sure that we prove all things, right? Because this saying, you're in my garden and I bring you water. And I say you can eat up all, all the fruits in this garden. But of the tree of knowledge, the fruits of knowledge, you best not touch. This initially may sound delightful. But after a certain period of time, when you mature, you've gotten married, you have a woman now, you now are ready to now establish your own. You need your own to ownership, right? So that you can multiply and be fruitful for your lineage going forth. Going backwards is for your ancestors. That's the tree of knowledge, knowledge of your past, knowledge of your connection, your roots that lead you to your source, your divinity. Now, it's important to understand that Adam 
the God of creation. And we use the term God, God, but Netter, the principle of creation, the nature of creation. Netter, right? At some point, the sun sets. We call it the last phase, the evening. We say good evening, <laughs> right? Evening. Now, you had Atom, the, cre the god of creation, and then he called his wife Eve because Atom was known as the setting sun, the evening. Now, after the evening comes Set, and this is the reason why Adam's third son is Set. And Set took over Adam's lineage in Genesis 4 or 5. Yeah. At the end of Genesis 4, it says, Then men began to call on the name of the Lord. Right? Because throughout Genesis 4, Lord the Lord operated alone he was separated from God because it's possible just like with Enoch that man walked with God for God took him right but they separated and most people you can see it you can go open up any Bible and you can see the separation between Lord God in Genesis 2 and 3 and then Lord operating on his own and then at the end of the chapter it says then men began to call upon the name of the Lord the Lord named after Seth <laughs> literally now we know the relationship between Seth and his brother Asar which the Greeks came in changed the language confused the language so that we didn't know each other's speech the, each other is the past our ancestors till now so that we will even amongst ourselves quarrel about certain details therefore creating discord it's an agent of discord just like the apple people refer to the garden of Eden they think of an apple when the apple was not even a part of the story that's Greek mythology it's, it's the apple of Eris the apple of discord when the actual fruit that we are supposed to be deliberating on is the fig tree. <laughs> and so when Christ was being challenged, he had just spoke of the fig tree. Right? And that's when the elders and the priests came and challenged them. By what authority do you do these things? But he gave them, he gave away the key to life, which is, he said, I say to you, you know, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what was done to the fig tree, what was done to the fig tree. And if you're thinking about the apple, you don't even know. But Adam and Eve sold fig leaves together and they made themselves coverings. Why? because she saw that the tree was good for food and pleasant to the eyes and desirable to make one wise. See that wise is the third eye. She saw pleasant to the eyes, desirable to make one wise. She took of the fruit and gave it also to her husband with her and he, and he ate. And the eyes of both of them were open and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. Then Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. You know, they 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 made for themselves coverings. They became instantly creative. They came instantly self-sufficient, problem solving. She looked for herself and her indeed her eyes did open. They wisened up. They lost their ignorance. Innocence is only good up to a certain age, a certain stage. So this is the reason why I talk a lot about faith. Where is it leading you? Because belief is 
a first stage. Stage one. <laughs> okay, you believe. I believe you. But I don't know if you're telling me the truth. No. So I need to take what I believe and step out on faith. I need to put action to it. I need to take it to the next step, which is faith. Invest in it. Explore it. And so this... This, once you go explore it, now it takes you into the knowing because after you have explored it, experimented, experienced it, now you know whether you were right or wrong. And the next generation is now building on a more solid foundation. You can give them the keys so that they can move forward. So faith continues to benefit the lineage. So the faith shouldn't be stagnation. We shouldn't be seeing the, a result generation after generation after generation that is poor, that's not producing anything positive, and then just go along with it because of a tradition. Where is your faith leading you? If you're in the garden, the, the United States is a beautiful garden. I don't hate the masters of our societies, but I do understand that the masters of societies must have a default, a, a system that can control the masses Of course you have to have controls for the masses You have to have the stampede Going in the same direction You can't have a chaotic mass of people Amongst those masses There will be Exceptions But exceptions sometimes have consequences. Repercussions, maybe you could say. Because it's an exception. So it's not for everyone. It's exceptional. So when someone says, where do you get this authority? Where do you get these thoughts? Well, where do you get these results? See, it's a difference between... Results In life What you want is to get the results That you Desire to get out of this life Because Another person can walk up into you And say hey man You're going to be given another one And let's say I love this person and I trust this person But how can you prove what he say to be true or not unless you waste the life that you actually have, the here and now, what God has given you? Let no man fool you. Now, it's people that may not want much out of life, just want a simple life. It's what you are called to do but we want to do the work of God so that we can inherit eternal life the tree of life the key to life and that is to benefit our offspring which is the future, our future, passing on, paying forward it for our ancestors. Until next time, thanks for listening to another Illuminated Nubian Black Swan Radio.com production. Until next time, keep the faith. I'm out. Peace.